know I was here. <laughs> No. Well, it's because we've 
return to Mac in silage. We don't, don't follow. follow. Where's the Almighty? Well, he used to send half decent weather in July to open the airtime. And now he sees his group for silage in June and well, he doesn't bother anymore. No, right. Fine. Come on, Kenneth. Mm. <laughs> You're incorrigible. Hey, I wouldn't know. No one's ever tried to encourage me. So, you're a silage man then? Well, I'm a farmer, I'll do what makes sense. Fair enough. Well, I'd make a bit of hair, mind it. Seems that with the hogs in winter. Hogs? Oh, you keep pigs too? <coughs> hogs are young sheep. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, Raven's after that buzzer. He's really going for it. Oh, well, they nest up in the crags, just up there at Raven, like youngins. That's brave. Really brave. Oh, I, I've seen a raven take a grouse chick about so much as a buy a leaf. Yes, it is easy to get sentimental. What's this? Oh, oh back in Grandad's day before they had proper tractors and that. In fact, I don't even think tractors were invented. Or if they existed, they were more like a legend, you know, from fire. Some thought they had more to cars mind and, well, they did a customisation job. Took them apart, fitted extra gears forward and back. Sometimes they hitched up the old airtime machinery. Of course, it were all horsepower back then, you understand, what with air rakes and forks to turn air built pipes. This what they did back then. They adapted things to suit. Genius, really, it's the media mentality. Did you ever see this one going? Well, it was way before my time as this. You talk about being sentimental. Well, my dad was sentimental about all the machinery. This one got put here as a jumper. A jumper? Well, it's a repair job. A temporary one, mind, but that seems to be doing a much better job as a wall than it does an old mowing machine, by all accounts. It must be really old, then. Oh, aye. That's it, walls a great deal older, mind. What's your name? Jemima. But friends call me Jem. It's nice to meet you, Jem. My name's Jason Drive. Oh, look! Meadow Sweet. Meadow Sweet? Isn't that what you call it? Well, that's Bride's Wall. It's my mum's name for it. I used to carry that to weddings. I'm oh, sure it looks nice enough there. Well, it brightens up that niche, I'll say that much for it. Smells alright too, I suppose. Oh, do you keep meadow sweet in your meadow? Hey, you don't want to be looking in there, Jim! That give you right. Like okay, but you're happy enough to look out here. Alright. Oh, there's some nice enough looking things round here, I won't be <laughs> We're not going to see eye to eye, are we? We could just avoid certain issues. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to have to get back on with this, so. Oh. All oh, right, yeah, no, um, I'm dead busy too. All these pistols are not going to kill themselves, you know. Just give me a shout if you want anything. Thanks. Maybe that's Dimitri. Do you want anything from that? Um, I'll treat you if you like. Thanks, but somehow I don't think I'm going to want anything from him. Do it yourself. Put the trap on them. No, 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 no. If you don't treat them right, then they're not going to turn you in profits in blast. Now, 
My dog, it's a working dog, and well, my dog's got a name, so my feeling's a bit different. And, well, at home, I've got a cat, and feeling's different again, and probably blood when he goes home. Well, I couldn't, that's all. They're all equal to me. I'm a vegetarian. Do you drink milk? I know what you're going to say. What happens to all the male calves? I know it doesn't all add up, I know, and I'm sorry, but it's just the way I am. Shut up, then. Really? Yeah. Well, not until recently, yeah. Now they can select me for insemination, but up until a few years back, if they were nearly calves like Holsteins, they'd be shot. There's no use for them, they're too specialised. No, I couldn't do that. It's that bit that would break my head with that. If you would only eat veal, like everything's a bit different. We could have all-purpose beef, but I don't shut up. I don't want to eat veal, and anyway, it's really cruel. Mm -hmm. Veal crates were about years ago in this country. Now you can have fresh, free-range, organic veal if you want, as long as you don't want it white and tasting in out. <laughs> so what do you do with your calves then, the male ones? Oh, mine is a suckler herd, so it's different. And you don't know what a suckler herd is, do you? Well, I guess they suck. <laughs> they suckle. Fine. Lead the way. The way? The way out of here. But I see no way. 
We came in by the way. Did we? Yes, let us take the same way back, Jason. No, I didn't take any way. I was just stood here and then and it all changed. Then there is no way. No way back. What, so is this the start of something? Yes. We've named the Aurochs. Ha. Ah, a storm is coming. Pick up! She's a... the princess. Oh, that flower! Oh. <laughs> it needs a name. Oh, we can ask the girl! Are you mad? Is it a picture? <laughs> oh. Um. oh, it was born of the wind! Uh, uh, the wind blew, and then a tree fell down. And well, it's been there all the time, I suppose. The wind! Shine. Let it go. If the 
let the flowers grow all around. That was impressive, Melvin. <laughs> but if this is all going to be a waste of time, I need to spread oh, my... Jason, 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 Jason! You do amuse me. You see, we are not in your time at all, but another time entirely. No, we could return to your time any time you wanted to, and our time together would be like no time at all. Ergo, a waste of time simply is not a possibility. A waste of a gift. A waste of an experience. That is something else. Right? Hmm. Our little clearing has grown. Light. As much as anyone could wish for light. Bringing energy, life giving energy from the golden sun, even when it rains. The wild ox has been tamed. And its descendants graze the grasses of our little clearing. Now the grasses. Let us not forget them. They do tend to get overlooked. Hey, well, I suppose they're what it's all about after all. Uh -huh. <laughs> they're beasts. Cattle. Now that means something to yeah, you. Right, it smells like a farm already. Well, of sorts. I can't see any farmhouses. Whoa, 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 whoa. There is nothing like that as yet. No buildings at all. There is a kind of village of huts some way off, but, but you are a wandering herdsman. You follow the cattle from pasture to pasture. Perhaps you think you even drive them. That world's gone. I mean, oh, well, no, it's obvious why it's gone, but well, I've only just noticed what with all this new light. How observant you are, Meadow Keeper! <laughs> you will make my task so much easier. Music! Over the forest, summoning all the seasons. Gossip of floating over the forest, gentle summer breeze. Thistle down, and calls for dandelion clocks. Hawks bit, mouse ear, cat's ear, sour docks. The moon was Yorkshire fog, meadow buttercup. Let's not forget the deer around here. They tend to get overlooked. Where did you come from? <laughs> And a bird off, bird. Darling, his mantle, self built to the coast, hairbell, up by daisy. Metal vexing, melancholy, this old crazy little sex of rage. Cowsip, and his tongue, bugle, sneeze, wall, and And let's not forget the grasses, they also get overlooked. I beg your pardon? And let's not forget the grasses, they tend to get overlooked. But I think I'll find it's a big bit. cycle of seasons. A recorder, maybe, or a tambourine and oboe. That was all we needed. I understand. It's gentle, isn't it? 
What are you doing here? This isn't your journey. Oh, I was just passing through. I'm on a parallel course. Well, don't let the medal keeper see you. Medal keeper, who's that? Well, I don't know what you're doing here. I'm not your guide. No, but I thought I had go, to... go, 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 go. Okay. Don't want to rock the boat. <laughs> Thank you. No. Move, oh, O celestial sphere, thy shining wall, around the globe of time. Illuminate the passing of the years and stop. But I shall stop, although, all right, but none of thy glitches, mind. Stop! Meadowkeeper! We have just skipped through a century or two. Sorry! I mean, I know it is you who is supposed to decide these things, and I'm just a guide, really. But it's just that I know where all the best bits are. For you, I mean. Uh, uh, that's all right, as long as we all get home safely. Well, there's no guarantee of that, but it's usually what happens. So don't worry too much. Here, Melvin, am I going to still be in fashion? Oh, yes, you will need that cloak. Now, this is the Iron Age, and the climate has got a great deal colder. <clears throat> One man, a herding father, is about to have an idea. And you can be that man if you want. Can I? Yes, it's easy. <laughs> it's just that for the duration of this scene, all your memories will be erased. Only the Iron Age exists for you. Mm. That's frim. Frim? I've just made it up. It's rather good, I think. What does it mean? It expresses <coughs> the fullness, the richness, the power in this sweet smelling swarm. Frim. Oh, it's a good word. It's a fine morning for a good word. When you think of this scene in winter, it's desolate, dead stalks, grasses brittle with frost. Our poor beasts struggling to find a scrap to eat. If only we could keep it somehow just like this. Frim. Hey. Uh, and um, these, what do you call these? Oh, um, these are called wisps. Ah, wisps. Mm. Uh, these wisps of grass. Where cattle control. They've been dried by the sun and the wind. So they're dead. Yeah, but it's green. Well, it's not like the life of stalks of winter. But if it's green, it will rot. No. No, not if it's dry. But think about it. Uh, we dry corn, and we keep that dry, and it lasts. In fact, we even dry fish with the help of the sun and the wind, and that keeps us through winter. It could work with this. It's worth a try on a small scale. Okay. So we'll need a fresh area that cattle haven't trodden, and we'll need some means of keeping them out. Uh, I use wattles. Cut. Wattles are good for sheep. But not a cat. Ah, what about stones? We could get loads of stones piled up one by one on top of each other. Uh, uh, no? No. Okay. Ah! What about some of this thorny stuff that cattle won't touch? We could get some of this and we could plunk it in the ground. Oh, a kind of living barrier. <laughs> oh, I like it. What would we call it, do you think? Well, it's kind of on the edge of the zone that we want to keep safe. Hey, 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 we just invented 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 hey,
and the sound of fast that's to be sought. So, oh, thy father, he wants thee word to some rich prince, but somehow thou art not convinced. But Agatha, how did you guess? I look at the eyes, not the dress. Then help me, Aunt. What can I do? How are we to see this through? That everyone might be content with the outcomes they are set. The chief thing that we need is time. In stealing that, there is no crime. Time might bring thy father wealth. And find my husband. Ah, through stealth. The right choice for thy heart's desire, and dress thee yet in rich attire. It's a bit of a tall order, that. Never say never, and never say can't. I have it. My twin sister, Elspeth, hath neared I not of an apprentice. Forgive me, Aunt, but mm -hmm. is it not said she walks in the moonlight and talks with the dead? Those are only scurrilous rumours. She can cure sickness or cast out tumours in beast or man where physicians cannot. What matters it then how the powers are got? Some would say it matters a lot. And some spout rubbish best forgot. <laughs> she is my sister. In that I'll trust. And if you trust her then, it follows I must. Well said, my child. Now, it's three days' trek that's through the forest that's over the bay. I'll give thee provisions to carry thee there, and this charmed amulet for thee to wear. This will protect thee from all kinds of danger. Now, stick to the path and talk with no stranger. Meanwhile, to thy father will I now wend, to stall him with stories before he consent to fetch thee back from this endeavour. And Agatha, what made you so clever? I don't know, my child. I came to me as the rose to the briar, or the leaf to the tree. Answer! Our meadow starts to roam, one day's journey from her home. In the middle of that thick, dark wood, she finds a rough shelter to eat her aunt's food. But sleep will not come. There are noises at night that keep Meadow awake in a state of pure fright. Oh, what was that? Oh, to the heavens I pray, dear angels, for mercy till break of day. felt something, let's call it a bond, between them, though they spoke not about it. By the time that they parted, neither could doubt it. Here, take this as a token of thanks. The journey is done now. This is my aunt, and all danger has passed. So it may as well give protection to thee. It works by a spell. Spells? Thank you, that's, that's very, very kind. I shall miss the sight of thy sheep behind. Really? Oh, no maiden's ever said that before. Oh, be off with me now, for this is her door. Here, I shan't forget thee, it's not in a hurry. She's the kind of girl I think I could marry. Fare thee well. Look. 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 Oh. Oh. And Elspeth, you gave me a shock. Welcome, my child. There was no need to knock. 
I knew of thy coming and of thy intent. But where is the charm my sister left? I'm afraid I... I gave it to the one who was kind. Well, that was foolish. You think we just find that sort of thing or growing on a tree? I'm sorry, Aunt Elspeth. Make it up to me. Now, here's the plan. Thou serve as apprentice, mixing tinctures and ointments, and when tis all over and thy time is served, thou be dressed as richly as thou deserve. But how long will this take? Near seven years. Seven years? Seven years! That's an eternity! It's standard. And my assurity, I want something from this too, you know. Once more, thou must take a solemn vow, pledging thyself to me and no other. Forget about seeing thy father or mother, let alone a suitor. Get that out of thy head. Whoever he was, if he comes near here, is dead. In the gown of green silk shalt thou be decked, and for each month of labour it shall be specked with a new coloured thread, interwoven by art so mysterious. Well, we'll leave out that part. Each coloured thread is the sign of a new skill, a new herb, a new cure for them as are ill. Like a badge it, of my trade. Oh, you could say that, yes. But of such dazzling beauty, Thy former old tat <laughs> will seem as the shell of a chrysalis shed by a glorious butterfly, grown instead. Damn the gross! By magic it seems, and one to fulfil thy wildest dreams. But listen closely to what I now say, that thou might never rue this day. For these seven years thou must speak to no man. No, no boy, neither. That's an outright ban on conversation or letters with any male kind of creature or person, till the day thou find the last coloured thread in thy gown has grown. That day thou mayst take any man as thy own. Oh, and in addition, take no kind of payment for anything thou dost. Thy wages are thy raiment. If this vow is broken, the magic runs back, and each coloured thread turns green or black. Until thy pen, like unfastened bands, the power to heal shall be stripped from thy hands. The power to speak shall be stripped from thy tongue. Nought shall be spoken, nought shall be sung. Think on it carefully. What am I to lose? At least is where I get to choose my own fate to some extent, and escape my father's selfish intent. Uh, make thy note on this. Tis a sprig of her veil, most sacred of herbs. Say, I shall remain. I shall remain. Oh. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> there, it's done. The vow is taken, and thy work's begun. And so, our letter was dressed in green silk. An improvement already, and as white as pure milk. At the end of the first month, the first thread was inwoven. And so, to her work, our young meadow is behoven. Now, she goes to a clearing to seek a new herb, when who should chance by? Her peace to disturb. Hey, well, hello there. Look who it is. That's a fine gown to be nice for a peasant. Have you gone up in the world there? Eh? Or has Kemp got my tool? Or am I not the kind amongst whom you belong? Right. Fine, then you play like that. And he's me and me finest gear and new hat. I'll tunnel off then, sorry to keep me. I mean, do you have to ignore me completely? Here, I've still got this amulet here around my neck. No animals have killed me, no boats have wrecked, so maybe there's something in them spells of yours after all. Right, fine, I'm off. Yeah, I'm gonna get crash a ball. You never know, I might just find myself a wedge. I mean, do I give up some kind of stench? And so she laboured, studied and grew, ever more skillful in this art that was new to her and for which she seemed gifted. Years went by. But her spirits, they seldom lifted. But, oh, where'er she fared, folk 
marveled them all at the astonishing garment, this young meadow wall. For her beauty alone far spread her fame. But when with her herbs she cured sick and lame creatures and sometimes people too, news reached the king, who was after something new. Thou <laughs> there, thou royal huntsman fellow, art new here, I said. Whisper, Renai Bello, or else expect no further promotion until thou displays more love and devotion to thy neonificent monarch. Dost understand? I'm sure. So. A project I have in hand oh. that requires a huntsman's guile and skill. Don't look so worried, there's no one to kill. At least I hope not, if all goes well. Dost thou know, or hast heard tell, of a maiden who wears a rich green gown, bespeckled in colours, cramping through the brown? <laughs> and so skilful in her, she's much in demand. Yes. But I want her brought here. Nay, I command that she attend me without further delay. I'm sure you'll think of the words to say to Richard in honour, etc. Take a spare horse. So that if need be, she's brought here by force. It's just a story. <laughs> She has her own guide for that. <laughs> and so, our meadow was brought to the palace. The huntsman assures her he bears her no malice. She speaks to him not, he does not know why. She answers him only with tears and a sigh. If thou wilt work by royal appointment, curing all ears with thy herbs, tinctures, and ointments for one whole year, I'll pay you regally out of the profits. Well, settle it legally. So was it to be? Wilt thou speak? Very clever. She is choosing to play for time. Thou wilt live beneath my huntsman's sanctions until you have sorted out your line of action. So, now we, I'm a bit confused. How long have we got left? Well, we have until this evening about one hour. But, in terms of the story, that is up to you. Oh. Hey, I suppose it depends on, on how long I've got before my seven years is up. I'm sorry, I wasn't counting. How come you're allowed to speak now? I don't know. But that is most interesting. Do go on. If my seven years apprenticeship is nearly up, then I am free and can speak anyway. I can make my choice. Take some money for the good things I give to the world, keep my fine dress, and marry the man I want. And they all lived happily ever after. <laughs> but if there isn't enough time, what then? All would be lost. That's why I need time. Time to think. Ooh, a conundrum. Oh, I hate conundrums. But have we not got all the time left that we want here? Oh, you mortals. Expelled from the Garden of Eden because of impatience, and because of impatience you shall never return. But don't you know how the story ends? The story is in your hands now. As bad as he is. Where's your guide? Didn't he tell you? We don't have the answers. She said I could tag along with you guys. It's a she? Hmm. Fair enough. Well, we will leave this fairy tale for now. You have this evening to decide. But how will this story end? Will we turn you back into your dull dress and rob you of your powers to heal? Or will there be time enough for you both to find a new way? Find out when we return for the final act of... No! no.